Death is nothing at all. It does not count. I have only slipped away into the next room. Nothing has happened. Everything remains exactly as it was. I am I and you are you. And the old life that we live so fondly together is untouched, unchanged. Whatever we were to each other, that we are still. Call me by the old familiar name. Speak of me in the easy way which you always used. Put no difference into your tone. Wear no forced air of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed at, at the little jokes that we enjoyed together. Play, smile, think of me, pray for me. Let my name be ever the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without any effort, without the ghost of a shadow upon it. Life means all that it ever meant. It is the same as it ever was. There is absolute and unbroken continuity. What is this death but a negligible accident? Why should I be out of mind because I am out of sight? Hi everyone, this is Tesleem. And this poem by Henry Scott Holland. He lived in the late 1800s to 1900s, has crept this poem has crept back into my life so many times. And the first time I heard it, it absolutely infuriated me. I was so angry that how could someone even say that death is nothing? I've had my grandma pass away. I've had friends pass away. I've had family members pass away. I... I feel like there have been times where I just, you know, you start fearing your own death and, and I don't know how someone could say that it doesn't change anything. And then to have my mom pass away a few years ago, that was the biggest shock of my life. And I was angry because I was like, everything has changed. Like the person who brought me into this world is gone. And I, I didn't like that the rest of the world was going on with their lives. And I wanted to shake someone and scream and say like, stop, like everything has changed. It's not the same. It's all different. And it's not nothing at all. It's, it's the biggest thing that has happened. But I realized also that this poem tenderized me at the same time that it was infuriating me. There was like this kind of hope and peace that it brought to my life and still brings to my life because there is a big part of me that really wants to believe that this is true that my loved one is just in another room that just because they're out of sight doesn't mean they're out of mind and that I could still continue to have a relationship with them. And I have to say that there was a really pivotal moment through dance that taught me the power of this. I feel like dance has taught me that maybe there really is no death. That maybe this poem, that there's a lot of truth to it. After my mom passed away, I was so lost. I wasn't even fully, I didn't feel fully present. I was, I was feeling guilty for doing something like dancing. And I had been dancing for a long time before then. And I had gone to so many events prior to that, that I was looking forward to going to. And I couldn't imagine being at any of the festivals and classes 
and just social dancing as if nothing had happened. I had already bought tickets to a festival that was happening in Vancouver that was unlike any of its kind. And I had really, you know, I was excited because there were instructors from all over coming in and a lot of time and effort had been put into this. And I decided to show up for the festival. I'm not sure if it was just because I paid for it or because I thought maybe if I go that I can like get lost in the midst of whatever was happening to do something other than, you know, live in my, in my sorrow. But when I got there, I just didn't know how to be. Like people would ask me how I was doing and what was going on. And I'm not the kind of person that can fake. Like I can't say, oh yeah, everything's going great. But my mom just passed away. And I tried not to make it that severe for the person that was listening. But then I also felt like I was not being true to myself. And I thought I was doing okay until... Um, an instructor that was coming in from out of town that I thought that we had, you know, a pretty good connection and I was looking forward to his classes and loved the way he teach, he, he was t teaching at that time. Um, told me right to my face, nobody wants to hear about your mom, Tesleem. And my heart just sank because I wasn't going around talking about her all the time, but at the same time, if he was going through that same thing, I would never have said that to him. And that's not the way that I would have wanted a dance friend or a friend or someone, even an acquaintance, to respond to me and what I was going through. And I just didn't want to go to his classes. I didn't actually want to be around him. And I thought I was hiding in this room where they there was um, these movies being shown because I just couldn't get myself to go to workshops and classes where there were hundreds of people that knew me or I knew them. And I, I just needed to be somewhere where I didn't have to be social or fake my way through. So I went to these movies that were being shown in one of the rooms and um, the artist that was had created them, his name was, he called himself La Epoca. And these movies were amazing because they were all about the roots, like honoring the roots of salsa and kizomba. And, and it made me feel really good because I also was feeling like this really deep need to honor my mom, like to honor, to make sure she knew that I, I wasn't forgetting about her, that, um, you know, I didn't want me going out and having fun, like to look like I just like didn't care. And so watching these movies made me feel like it was nice to see that people, there were people out there that were really, um, that really valued like family or connections or roots. And it wasn't just all kind of just, um, you know, lacking of depth. Um, but I was still very lost. I, I felt like I wasn't fully there. I was kind of half in this world and half like wanting to go wherever my mom was to figure out how I could be with her. And so I was in this realm of like a middle realm. And um, I saw all the workshops that were going on, but I couldn't walk into the ones that were I had so many people on there because it was overwhelming to me with how I was feeling. So I walked into a room that um, had a really small number of people attending these classes. And it wasn't salsa, it wasn't bachata, it wasn't kizomba. There were parts of it that were related to salsa, but I think it was kind of um, advertised as a mambo class. But the person teaching it was... Um, teaching a lot of rhythms and using like drums and getting us to feel into different rhythms. And at a certain point, I didn't realize that it had done a great job of kind of 
because it was so different, I, it engaged me and it, I didn't link past stuff or um, what I was going through to it. And I, I got lost in it in a good way. And the instructor turned out to be Josue Joseph, who is the same person that had created the, the movies. And at a certain point, we were doing this um, dancing on what he called, well, it was two and a half, on two and a half. So we had talked about dancing on two and on one, but here we were doing this other kind of movement that, if I remember correctly at the time, he said that we were dancing on two and a half. And I was like, this is so cool because it felt amazing. But on top of that, how fitting that I'm in this like middle realm of dancing in between one and two because I was in a middle realm myself and I loved it. It was exactly what I needed. I didn't even know that at the time. And then um, I usually would go social dancing and wait for that. But I was like, I don't think I can social dance. So I went to watch the performances in a big hall and when I went to these performances, I was kind of hiding at the back just in case I wanted to leave. And um, this really interesting music came on that was not something I was familiar with. I recognized the instruments, but not the the rhythm. I later learned it, it's a Wahira, Wahira rhythm. And the artist, again, ended up on stage was Josue Joseph. And it was a song that was created with him and his father. His sister was doing the vocals. And there were two beautiful, stunning dancers on stage, just like mesmerizing the audience with their like sultry kind of like, it just looked really eph ephemeral. Is that the way you pronounce it? I just felt like it looked very heavenly, which was really interesting because the song the lyrics ended up being about connecting to, like connecting earth and heaven, kind of connecting um, after someone passed away. But the crazy thing is that the song is in Spanish. How did I understand it? I only knew a few words in Spanish and I definitely wasn't listening to like Spanish music being able to understand like I'd have to like sit down and read and see the words on paper but this song the way it was presented the way the music came about I could feel it deep down inside and I could understand it and the first words were no hay que llorar and by that time I was already crying and then the next few words were um podrás bailar de nuevo you'd be able you're gonna be able to dance again backtracking a bit before that it said um podrás abrazarme de nuevo you can embrace me you will be able to embrace me again and it also there was a line in there about um yo sé que no me olvidarás I know that you will never forget me. Everything that I needed to hear in that moment, all the emotions that I was going through, that I was feeling guilty, being there, dancing, enjoying life, worrying about my mom, wondering how I could connect to her. The connection just came to me in a dance festival through music, through this artist who had never met me and afterwards, he ended up, um, I ended up telling him what the song meant to me and how much it impacted me. And he introduced me to his father, who is uh, Alfonso, Alfonso Panama, um, who was a bassist in the Palladium era. And they ended up signing their CDs, some of their CDs to me with a message to my mom. So rather than someone telling me we don't want to hear about your mom, this artist and his whole family were so touched that I was impacted by their music and 
they wanted me to know that it surely has to be a message for me as well. The song itse itself was um, made for Chito Baldas, if I have the right name, I have to make sure I have that correct. Um, yeah, who was um, a musician that played with Alfonso Panama and it was dedicated to him and someone else as well um but it i think it was inspired by him and he had passed away and so this connection came together in such a unique way that to me this started showing me that actually really maybe there is no death like there there is a, a YouTube channel that I watch called, it's to do with Abraham Hicks teachings, if any of you have heard of them. Um, and they have said in a video that I keep watching over and over again recently, you think that you come here and then you die and then you're gone. And they, they keep saying that us in the physical world mis, mistake all that. We don't come here and then die and then we're gone. And what they said, I, I want to make sure I say this correctly. You were, you were not dead. Like in, in the past, you know, in your other lives or whatever you... It wasn't that you were dead and then alive and then dead again. You were alive and alive and alive. Just like Chito Valdez through that song or through my mom sending that song to me, even though she didn't know any Spanish. Like There has to be that continuum that I talked about in that poem that I brought up from that poem that I read you in the beginning there is a continuum like for me to receive that message and I'm here alive on like in physical and my mom has passed away we say but she has to be alive in order for her to continue to reach me in this way. And Abraham Hicks talks about how we have it all wrong, that we, we don't, we are never gone. Like when we pass away, we're not, we don't go anywhere. We don't go anywhere. We are just alive in a non-physical, like we're, how do they say it? You're alive and alive and alive, but alive in non-physical and then alive in physical. And I really feel like dance taught me this because even when I'm dancing, I feel like I can surpass space and time. The music, the movement, it connects me to other realms. Like I was dancing on two and a half in Josue's workshop and I was connecting with my mom or she was connecting with me through their song. Oh, by the way, it's called Vera, Veras. I don't think I said that. Um, that time space was completely annihilated like there there was I it was suppressed like there was um those boundaries were crossed so I was dancing on two and a half in a middle realm the middle realm that allowed me to feel this message that I feel like the universe is really saying your mom's trying to speak to you in your language like however it can get to you and dance makes me feel like that as well like it it crosses all these boundaries that 
we don't feel like it doesn't feel like we do on a normal basis but because we surrender to the space and in our bodies and to trusting in like these other realms we can feel things and do things inside of us and through dance that otherwise we seem to think that we're incapable of.